Good morning, students. I hope you have read what we have done yesterday. My childhood, chapter number six. Open your textbook, Behave, to page number sixty-nine. Yesterday we had stopped up to three till three paragraph, and uh, I was telling you that how, what was the feeling of uh, Abdul Kalam after receiving his first wage? It was a feel. He felt the surge of pride. in earning his own money for the first time how did he get his first money by distributing the newspaper and who helped him to get this job his cousin samsuddin understood and what was the effect of first world war in rameshwaram so far there was no effect because it was a very small small town remember that but then what was the first effect of world war the rain train halt at rameshwaram station was cancelled that was a suspension mean it was stopped it was cancelled okay today let us move on to paragraph number 4 you see there every child is born with some inherited characteristics inherited meaning what he brings from his parents okay that is inborn inherent inherited characteristics into a specific socio economic and emotional environment that means our character depends on the on which socio economic what emotional em environment we are brought up okay and trained in certain ways by figures of authority that's why you know my dear students many times i used to tell the students that we don't know your parents who are they but then by the the way you behave the way you relate the way you respond the way you act shows what type of background you are coming from and therefore it is your duty to give good picture of your background understood because they say you by looking at you we will know from what type of background you are coming okay what type of social economic and emotional environment and emotional environment means nothing but then whether you have got proper love and care from your parents from your siblings or no socio economic means what type of people are living in your locality whether economic means you know whether you are rich you are poor you are middle class from your behavior we know it social whether you are um, what type of your thinking pattern okay we are rich, high low you are feeling that you are high caste low caste this all kind of thing depends on your upbringing okay by figures of authority by your parents by your elder brother sisters your relatives how they have they trained i inherited honesty and self discipline from my father important question okay remember that what did he inherit or got automatically from his father honesty honesty means sincerity you know honesty not to tell lies opposite of lies is honest okay be what you are honesty and self discipline from my father and from my mother i inherited faith in goodness and deep kindness deep kindness he was very kind the mother was very very kind you see deep kindness he is telling okay deep kindness from my mother very kind to the people you know the first paragraph it is said no the mother was cooking daily food and he was feeding how many people he doesn't know but then he says more than our own family members outsider she was feeding this is called kindness and generosity and he had faith he believed in goodness that if you do something good to others that same goodness will come back to you he believed in, she believed in doing good to others and so did my three brothers and sister he had one sister and three brothers okay that means they were how many three brothers and one sister plus himself five children together I had three close friends in my childhood. You see, three brothers and three close friends. They they are Ramanand Sastri, Arvindan, and Shiv Prakashan. All three boys were from Orthodox Hindu Brahmin families. What is Orthodox means? Very old, traditional minded, very staunch. We call very strong Hindu Brahmin families. as children none of us ever felt any difference amongst ourselves because of our religious differences and upbringing and who was he remember these three of them were from brahmin families and um, abdul kalam who from which religion which caste he belongs to he was a muslim but then they did not feel any differences okay in fact ramana the sastri was the son of 
ಪಕ್ಷಿ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಣ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಿ ದ ಹೈ ಪ್ರೀಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ರಾಮೇಶ್ವರಂ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ಹೈ ಪ್ರೀಸ್ಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಇಲ್ ಹೂ ಆಫರ್ಸ್ ಪೂಜಾ ಯು ನೋ ದ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ಹೈ ಪ್ರೀಸ್ಟ್ ಲೇಟರ್ ಹಿ ಟು ಕವರ್ ದ ಪ್ರೀಸ್ಟ್ಹುಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ರಾಮ್ ರಾಮೇಶ್ವರಂ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ಯು ನೋ ಯು ನೋ ದ ರಾಮೇಶ್ವರಂ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಬಿಗ್ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ಇನ್ ತಮಿಳ್ನಾಡು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೊ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ದ ಹೈ ಪ್ರೀಸ್ಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ದ ಪ್ರೀಸ್ಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಓಕೆ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿ ವೆನ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಫಾದರ್ ಡೈಡ್ ಹುಡ್ ಡೈಡ್ ದ ರಾ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಣ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಿ ವೆನ್ ಹಿ ಡೈಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಸನ್ ಹೂ ರಾಮನಾಥ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಿ ಹಿ ಟು ಕಪ್ ದ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಫಾದರ್ ನ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ಓಕೆ ಹಿ ಬಿಕೇಮ್ ದ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ಪ್ರೀಸ್ಟ್ ಓಕೆ ನಾವು ದ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ಅರವಿಂದನ್ ಹಿ ವೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಬಿಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅರೇಂಜಿಂಗ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ವಿಸಿಟಿಂಗ್ ಪಿಲ್ಗ್ರಿಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ನು ತಮಿಳ್ನಾಡು ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಪಿಲ್ಗ್ರಿಮ್ಸ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೊ ಹಿ ವೆಂಟ್ ಟು ದ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ವಿಸಿಟಿಂಗ್ ಪಿಲ್ಗ್ರಿಮ್ಸ್ ಹಿ ಬಿಕೇಮ್ ದ ದಟ್ ದಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಬಿಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶಿವ್ ಪ್ರಕಾಶನ್ ಬಿಕೇಮ್ ಎ ಕ್ಯಾಟರಿಂಗ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಸದರ್ನ್ ರೈಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಯು ಸಿ ಆಲ್ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ಇನ್ ಹೈ ಪೊಸಿಷನ್ಸ್ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಆ್ಯನ್ಯುವಲ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಸೀತ ರಾಮ್ ಕಲ್ಯಾಣಂ ಫಿಫ್ ಪ್ಯಾರಾಗ್ರಾಫ್ ಮೈ ಡಿಯರ್ ಬಾಯ್ಸ್ ಸನ್ ಗರ್ಲ್ಸ್ ಸೆರೆಮನಿ ಆರ್ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಅರೇಂಜ್ ಬೋರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಎ ಸ್ಪೆಷಿಯಲ್ ಪ್ಲಾಟ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಫಾರ್ ಕ್ಯಾರಿಂಗ್ ಐಡಲ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ಟು ದ ಮ್ಯಾರೇಜ್ ಸೈಟ್ ಸಿಚುಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಮಿಡಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪಾಂಡ್ ಕಾಲ್ ರಾಮ್ ತೀರ್ಥ ವಿಚ್ ವಾಸ್ ನಿಯರ್ ಅವರ್ ಹೌಸ್ ಈವೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ರಾಮಾಯಣ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಲೈಫ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾಫಿಟ್ ವರ್ ದ ಬೆಡ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಸ್ಟೋರೀಸ್ ಮೈ ಮಾದರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಗ್ರ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಮಾದರ್ ವುಡ್ ಟೆಲ್ ದ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಯು ಸಿ ವಾಟ್ ಟೈಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ರೌಂಡ್ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಕಮ್ ಅಪ್ ವಿತ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಥಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಹೌ ಮೆನಿ ಆಫ್ ಅಸ್ ದೋಸ್ ಹು ಆರ್ ಹಿಂದೂ ವಿ ನೋ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಮುಸ್ಲಿಮ್ಸ್ ಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ರಿಲಿಜನ್ ಆರ್ ಹೌ ಮೆನಿ ಆಫ್ ಅಸ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಮುಸ್ಲಿಮ್ಸ್ ವಿ ನೋ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಅದರ್ ಕಲ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಅದರ್ ರಿಲಿಜನ್ಸ್ ಯು ಸಿ ಹಿಯರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಹೀ ಇಸ್ ಟೆಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಯು ಸಿ Uh, and in the picture you see what was happening can you see the in this picture in this village picture it is annual sri sita ram kalyanam ceremony this is a marriage okay during the marriage time what they used to do the our family used to arrange boats remember they are muslim but that time there wasn't or that there wasn't uh, that you are muslim or i am hindu that was not there okay so they used to arrange the boats with a special platform for carrying idols of the lord from the temple to the marriage site they used to take the idol from the from the temple to the where the marriage is taking place there in the middle of the pond called ram tirtha which was near our house and uh, even his par- his mother is his mother and grandmother they used to tell the children the bedtime stories at night from where from the ramayana from the life of the great prophets understood great this is what he has he was he has he has been brought up by his parents they are very open minded they did not teach their children only their religion but then they taught also from other religion sixth sixth paragraph i hope you are understanding one day when i was in the fifth standard at the rameshwaram elementary school a new teacher came to our class i used to wear a cap which marked me as a muslim and i always sat in the front row next to ramanada sastri who bore a sacred thread but the elementary school means is a primary school he was in the fifth standard okay fifth standard in the in rameswaram primary school and uh, the new teacher came to the class and naturally those days the muslims they were wearing the cap now also you all wear but then um, not in the school but then in the house surely you are wearing that is to that is to identify you know your own identify as a muslim and always he sat in front front row next to ramnath sastri now who was this ramnath sastri who was this ramnath sastri you remember he was the son of lakshman sastri the temple high priest a very a very uh, what to say high priest means a great um, um, pandit let us say okay who will perform all the puja in the temple who bore the sacred thread the brahmin they will they will wear the thread that is called sacred sacred means holy okay holy thread he was wearing to identify he was a hindu the new teacher could not
He looked utterly downcast as I shifted to my seat in the last row. The image of him weeping when I shifted to the last row left a lasting impression on me. Understood what has happened? When the new teacher came, he could not stomach. Could not stomach means could not tolerate. He couldn't understand how this Muslim boy is staying with the Brahmin's uh, uh, temple high priest's son. You know, the Brahmin boy. How he is sitting there. And so, because that was the social ranking. That was the situation at that time. And when the new teacher saw, he said immediately, please go and sit on the back bench, the last bench. And naturally, he felt very sad. And his friend Ramnada Sastri also felt very bad. He looked utterly downcast. He felt very sad and depressed. Because he shifted, he went to the last row. And, you know, he started weeping. Weeping means crying, sobbing. When he shifted, he left his friend. They were very close friends. When he went, moved to the last bench, he started crying. And that picture or that image left a lasting impression on me, he is telling. That means it lasted for a long time or maybe whole life. That's why he is writing today. Understood? Let's move on to lesson number 7. You see here the boat and they are carrying the idol for the marriage ceremony. Okay? Which is belonging to whom? Abdul Kalam. Paragraph number 7. After school, we went home and told our respective, pa respective parents about the incident. Lakshmana Sastri summoned the teacher and in our presence told the teacher that he should not spread the, spread the poison of social inequality and communal, communal intolerance in the minds of innocent children. He bluntly asked the teacher to either apologize or quit the school and the island. Not only did the teacher regret his behavior, but the strong sense of conviction. Conviction, Laksman Sastri conveyed ultimate reform to this young teacher. Are you understanding? After the school, this happened in the school, he moved to the last bench and uh, uh, Ramananda, his friend, he cried. And when they went home, they narrated to the their own parents what has happened, this incident. Now, Laksamana Sastri summoned the teacher. Summoned means he called for the teacher. Who was the Laksamana Sastri? He was the high priest and he was very well respected by the people of Rameshram, and Rameshwaram. And he called, summoned is to call the teacher. And in their presence told the teacher that he should not spread the poison of social inequality and communal intolerance in the mind of innocent children. These children are innocent. Children are not knowing who is Hindu, who is Muslim. It's the grown-ups are the one to distinguish between who is who, whether to sit with this person or no. Okay? So you should not spread this poison. It's like a poison, you know, social poison we call it. Because it's an inequality. It's a communal intolerance. Because we all are belonging to the same God. We are God's children. All are same. He bluntly asked, he rudely asked the teacher two things. Either apologize, that means either you say, feel, say sorry to them, or quit the school, leave the school, not only leave the school, but even to leave the island. Island, what is that? That's the Rameshwaram island, okay? Not only did the teacher regret, he felt very sad about it. He regret, he, he felt bad for his behavior. But then, he was reformed by whom? Lakshmana Sastri. This young teacher was reformed. You know, reformed, he was changed completely with the sense of, with the sense of conviction. That means now, hereafter, he would never behave in this way. Not to separate, not to create the division in the minds of young people. Clear? How beautiful story it is. Lesson number 8. Sorry, not lesson, paragraph number 8. On the whole, the small society of Rameshwaram was very rigid in terms of the segregation of different social groups. However, my science teacher, Siva Subramania Iyer, though an orthodox Brahmin with a very conservative wife, was something of a rebel. He did his best to break social barriers so that people from varying backgrounds could mingle easily. He used to spend hours with me and would say, Kalam, 
I want you to develop so that you are on par with the highly educated people of the big cities. You see, the teacher had already recognized in Kalam that he was a very intelligent boy. He was very um, clever boy. And so on the whole, what was the society, um, the, uh, the, the situation of his, his time of Rameshwaram? was very rigid. Rigid means very, very strong and very conservative. Very, They were not ready to change. That is called rigid. Rigid, whom we call very rigid, not ready to change the opinions or ideas. In terms of what? Segregation of different social groups. Segregation means suppression. Okay? They were not ready to, not ready to, what to say, to mingle together. However, the science teacher he is telling, who was the science teacher? Siv Subramania Iyer. Iyers are actually very high caste people there. Though an orthodox Brahmin, Brahmin, orthodox means I told you very conservative, very strict, coming from very, I mean, they feel they are the highest. With a very conservative wife, very conservative means narrow-minded, was something of a rebel. He wanted to fight for it. Understand it? During the time of Abdul Kalam, Rameshwaram, that small village, was very strong in terms of caste and religion. And mainly between these two groups of Hindus and Muslims. Because these Hindus and Muslims both were very strong, very rigid, very orthodox. They were not open-minded. Opposite of rigid is open-minded. Okay. Today it is more and more we are very open-minded. We can understand, we accept. India is known for his, for it. We call unity in diversity. And so, but those days it was not so. But then this particular teacher, Siva Subramania Ayer, who was a science teacher, he wanted to do something. He was a type of rebel, opposite. And he tried his best to break the social barriers, you know, these barriers, this, um, what to say, this um, block. He wanted to break this so that people from different backgrounds could mingle easily. They could mix together. And he used to spend hours with this small boy, Abdul Kalam, and would say, Kalam, I want you to develop. I want you to study well, study hard, so that you also can be at par with. At par means equal. Par is to equal with the highly educated people of the big cities. You can be equal with the children or the people of big cities. What the encouragement by his science teacher he got because the science teacher could recognize in this boy that he was very clever and he could he could do or, or he could study one day and he would become someone great he could he could understand that that's why he could say that i want you to study hard so that you can be one day you will be at par with means same equal with highly educated people of the big cities We'll continue tomorrow, okay? Now part uh, one, uh, one I have not put, but then two and three, all these are second part, third part, continuation, okay? Don't get confused. There is only one. There is no um, first part and second part. The video number only it is. Thank you, students.